Welcome to part six of the nutrition and weight loss class. This section covers weight gain and maintenance calories. So why do we gain weight? It's all about an energy balance. Calories in versus calories out. And I'm sure you've heard this one before. But what exactly is a calorie? A calorie is a measure of energy found in food and it's how much our body uses. Weight gain occurs when the amount of energy ingested, the food we take in, exceeds the amount of energy expended, the exercise that we put out. Remember, for protein, there's four calories per gram, carbohydrates is four calories per gram, and fat is nine calories per gram. So how many calories should we be consuming? What I would like for you to do is calculate your maintenance calories equation. Please take out the sheet that was provided to you with the post test. And on the second page, under part six, you will find an area for you to calculate your maintenance calories at your current weight. So you are going to use this equation. The first blank, you need to fill in your current weight. You multiply that by 10 to get your maintenance calories. You don't need a calculator. Just add in zero on the end of your weight. So if you are 250 pounds, we multiply that by 10, would be 2,500 calories would be your maintenance calories. So the maintenance calories is the number of calories required for you to maintain your current body weight. So that's how many calories you would need to take in to stay at the weight you're at right now. Now, in order to lose weight, we have to deficit calories. Take in less. Let's now calculate your maintenance calories at your goal weight. So the second line actually allows you to calculate your maintenance calories at your goal weight. So I want you to plug in your goal weight, multiply that by 10, and that will provide you with your maintenance calories at your goal weight. So if your goal weight is 150 pounds, multiply by 10 would be 1,500 calories to maintain your goal weight. I want you to notice the difference between the maintenance calories at your current weight versus the maintenance calories at your goal weight. Many of you might say it's half or there's a significant lower amount of calories at my maintenance calories at my goal weight. And this makes sense. When there's less of your body to fuel, there's less calories that need to come in. It's about deficiting calories and maintaining that deficit. Surgery helps you by restricting the amount of food that you can consume at once. It allows you to stay full and satiated for a longer period of time. If you're not using that tool and you're just constantly grazing throughout the day, you're generally going to increase your caloric intake, which we know leads to weight regain. So it's important to understand that in order to lose weight from your current body weight, we have to deficit calories. But many times that deficit is the same amount of calories you're going to need to continue to practice to keep weight off long term. So as you're losing weight, you're learning strategies and skills that have to be practiced for life in order to keep that weight off long term. As I stated, it is about an energy balance, intake versus output. Let's look at another example of how much you would have to burn 
to work off some calories. Walking burns about five calories per minute. So to burn 100 calories, you'd have to walk a mile at a three mile per hour pace. That isn't a Sunday stroll in the park. You'd be walking at a pretty good clip. A Burger King Whopper contains 640 calories. So to walk off that Burger King Whopper, we'll divide that by five calories per minute, you would have to walk 128 minutes or six miles. Let's look at a lower calorie alternative. We have the same volume of food, but far less calories. A Subway six inch turkey sub, no cheese, no mayonnaise, has 289 calories. So to walk that turkey sub off, burning five calories per minute, we'd have to walk for 57 minutes or three miles. Half the amount of exercise because there's half the amount of calories. One of the biggest challenges we're up against is that foods once looked like this. We had an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables everywhere. We paired that with lean proteins, beans, and whole grains. And now our foods look like this. Packaged, processed, prepared, a lot of added sugar and added fats. It makes sense why we might not eat a lot but it seems like we still continue to lose weight. These don't provide us with a lot of volume. They're what we call weight promoting foods. It doesn't take a lot of these to really add up. Another thing we're up against is this portion distortion. Take a typical dinner plate in 1960s. It was eight and a half inches and held 800 calories. In my house, we consider this the salad plate or maybe even the appetizer plate. A dinner plate now is about 12 inches and holds 1,900 calories. That's more than double the amount of calories. But as our portions have increased, we haven't gotten more active. So we're not burning those extra calories off, and that's really what's leading to greater weight gain. This is a great example of intake versus output. We are a super sized society. So let's take a typical fast food meal out, a double quarter pounder with cheese, chocolate shake, super sized fries, and two packets of ketchup. 2,550 calories for this meal. I want you to think back to your maintenance calories at your current weight. Would you have much left for the day? Remember, this is one meal. This is no other eating throughout the day. Probably don't have much left, if any. Now think about this at your goal weight. Would you have any calories left for the day? You might have eaten your calories for two days with a meal like this. It's important to understand that we can't outrun a bad diet. We have to make changes to our diet. We can't just rely on physical activity. Because in order to burn a meal like this off, we would have to do something like high intensity mountain climbing that burns 10 calories a minute for four hours and 15 minutes. Now maybe you can't do mountain climbing so you're going to have to walk. You'd have to walk approximately 30 miles to burn a meal like that off. So remember, we can't outrun that bad diet. So what am I getting at? We need to focus on healthy portion sizes, healthier foods, and making sure we're eating the proper portions. This guide goes over the different food groups and what are the appropriate portions for each of the foods. Next is part seven, weight loss strategies for success.